broken all laws and committed no crimes. Yet you're paying for those that did. Now, the reality when you strip back is corruption throughout the banking sector. Now, I found myself, sadly, five years ago facing um, a long and arduous task as a lay litigant in person. And you had, you had borrowed and you had got in, the market changed and you were in a difficult situation. Well, just like your listeners, I entered into an agreement in good faith, thinking that those that I was entering into were legitimate, that they were operating in accordance with statute law and legislation. I very quickly found out they weren't. So it would seem that good faith was only on one side. And then ultimately, uh, because of the criminal actions of the banking institutions in this state... I'm sure they would deny those anyhow, but anyhow, this is the nature of your book. Well, the, the book clearly shows that yeah. that part of it, I, I prove and, and verify every word I say. There's one but, a sentence that frightened me. By the third week of January 2006, my overdraft had grown to €280,000. You were clearly in, in deep trouble at that stage. Well, of course, um, in reading that, you will see that there was no documentation signed at that stage. So it raises serious issues about what the banks were doing. But when you draw back the curtains, your listeners will be horrified to see and hear that it was all preempted. It didn't matter who was borrowing money. The reality was that the banks wanted to sell on these loans and make massive profits. So ultimately, the banks never lost. But getting back to, to the, the struggle I had as a lay litigant in person, for five years I fought the banking institutions against what some might say the David and Goliath story. Mm. I was, it was more than one Goliath because you got a phone call one day saying, hello, am I speaking to Tom? Yes, I replied, I work in Finkel, planning office, and your planning is being pulled. So all the basis for your loans was stripped out from under you. It was, and when you go on in that chapter, you will see that there was collusion between the bank themselves who forced me to drop a judicial review. But, of course, just getting back to the book, and the whole emphasis of the book is an awakening in this country. As I said, it's the biggest social issue of our time. Um, we have, up and down this country, families who are being devastated with the fear of eviction. We have families who are breaking up. We have 1,500 children homeless in Dublin alone. Countless people throughout this country are just living consistently in fear. We had an eviction bill in 2013, and it was signed into power by 90 of our own TDs. Even four in this locality signed to evict their own constituents. The amount of information that's not getting out in the mainstream media is just incredible. It's appalling to, to witness the devastation of our families, of our women, of our children. Um, now, the book itself has been aligned with a constitutional challenge, which is the, the right to homes. Now, we have concerts uh, in December with Glenn Hansard on the 15th and 16th in Cork. Uh, sorry for the plug, but we're, what we're trying to do is to fund constitutional challenges against the state. And Which went, cost a fortune. Yes, and sadly, just in my own case, uh, ironically, I won my case. I became the only person in the history of the state to be evicted from his home and then to win back in the Supreme Court as a lay litigant. I was awarded my cause. To this day, I still haven't been paid. And more recently, when I was in the taxing master, the taxing master said she wouldn't pay my costs because I'm not entitled to an hourly rate which is endorsing slavery. It goes on, on, on and on, but well well done for me. For, I mean, you've put huge effort into, into it. Uh, Mick, you saw Anne uh, Red waiting for the sheriff. That is a wonderful cover, a little fellow, and eviction notice on the door. Um, you felt there was a film in it straight away, did you? Yes, <coughs> yes I did. When I first read uh, <coughs> the first draft copy of the book that Tom sent me, I, after reading the first few pages, I thought, we have to make a film of this. I've been a filmmaker for 45 years. And we have to make a film of it because this has not been seen. I hadn't seen no depiction of an actual eviction as described in Tom's book. Couldn't find us anywhere on YouTube. Have never seen it reported on newspapers, TV, anything. So I decided to make the film to let people see the down and dirty side of eviction. To let people see a woman being dragged from her home. Uh, that's, what, that's what needs to be seen in my opinion. 
It was a very moving scene, and I'm, 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 where can people get hold of that thing? Because it, it brought it home to me. I just thought, you know, you read about these things in the paper, but suddenly, I know it wasn't real, but it was acted as as actually happened. The film can be found on on YouTube. Uh, and, uh, 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 Waiting for the Sheriff is the name of the film. It's the same title as as the book. And um, I must tell you, John, we had a fantastic weekend here in Kilkenny. And we want to say thank you so much to the organisers of Kilkenomics because it's a fantastic festival in a fantastic city. Uh, David McWilliams and Max Kaiser have received copies of the book. And uh, we had a tremendous weekend here. Thank you, Kilkenny. As I should text you, just was sent in this. John, can you solve a mystery for me? There was an internationally recognised conference, Kilkenomics, in our city this weekend, yet it got no coverage in any of the mainstream Irish media. Why? Is this because we're outside the pale? What do you think, Dr. John? Does that come from Jean? I disagree, Jean. I think it got, it got very big coverage on the national and indeed in the international papers. I, I, I think it has, it, it has quite a big footprint. Well, John, I was in the Kilkenomics for the last couple of days and listening to the seminars given. And the one consistent statement from all the economists throughout this world said that the Irish government's spin is totally wrong. We are actually not out of recession. It is a lot worse than people actually realise. And either they're getting it wrong or a government is getting it wrong. But obviously, time will tell. And Tom, you've written in Waiting for the Sheriff about evictions. Is this still going on? I mean, wait, is there a solution to this? There's a very simple solution to all of this, and the reality, um, and of course, I was down in the courts every day for five years, uh, and I witnessed this on a daily basis. I became part of the Land League and inadvertently ran into oh, and the All Sops auction into Shelburne to stop an eviction, and that's ultimately how the, the Land League, or the rejuvenation of the Land League occurred. Um, how you stop it? The taxpayers are footing a minimum of 60 to 80,000 euros for every eviction. That's legal costs, paid by the taxpayers. Why not write it off instead of write it off the person's mortgage? The one thing we have in this country is common sense. But I said in the book, common sense is too common to be applied. <laughs> it's not very common. Yeah, it, you're right. And when you look at a couple, and I, I've akin it to modern day crucifixion. You go down to the four courts any day, any given day, I can walk into any court, and you'll see a woman or a man standing in court with no education in law, no qualifications, trying to basically protect their family from eviction. To talk the truth and to see if people will understand it. And so I'm delighted to hear Tom Darcy on your show. He's one of Ireland's heroes. He has saved lives in this corrupt country. He's one of the good ones. And that comes from Anya and Bagdosek. Thank you, Anya. But just going back to the, the modern day crucifixion, it, in this country, and I've raised this in the Supreme Court several times, we're entitled to be treated equally, fairly, and justly. But there is no equality or justness or fairness when a person is forced to represent themselves. We wouldn't allow a person to walk into an operating theatre and, and don on a gown to take a scalpel and operate on their children. That would be considered as a barbaric act. Yet the taxpayers of this country are forced to fund 60, 80, 100,000 euros in legal fees, then to evict the family. But the crimes are far deeper than that. When you consider you have registrars around this country who are getting anything from 124,000 euros a year, and then in the afternoon becoming a sheriff, and getting anything from 2.5% to 5% of the orders, that's generating millions, all again paid by the taxpayers, Hence the reason why I've written the book. You can find the book at www.waitingforthesheriff.com. It is well, well worth reading, and there's a lot of it. And, and I must say, Mick, it's your filming bit of it that I've, that I've seen really, really brings it home. And people can see that again on, on... People can see it on my YouTube channel, uh, <clears throat> and it's called Waiting for the Sheriff. The YouTube channel is called Mick Daniels. And can, John, can I just mention where, uh, that the, the book is stocked at the book centre in Kilkenny. They have a lovely window display there this weekend. Also at the book centre in Waterford. Also at the book centre in Wexford. Well, I'm delighted both you were able to come in. Sorry we haven't much longer to talk because it's a huge topic and maybe we'll come back to it again at some stage when we have more time. We have to take a break and back with you shortly.